they came in and were all the wise. And so on yesterday, Jeff and I spent about three and a half hours and hooked up all 10 computers. Uh, the computers hopefully will be ready to go within a couple of weeks. What we're going to have to do, because we didn't get hooked up with UC2B because of the way that layout was, we're going to have to uh, work with Comcast and that's going to cost us, and so we're going to send the bill to UC to be. But anyway, the, the whole purpose of this, the question I ask myself, the question, how can we use this new technology to minister to the members of our church and the members of our community? So that was the question that I asked. How can this be used to minister to the needs of people? So we stop and look at the computer is pretty much taken over. If a person wanted to go to Walmart and put in an application for a job of picking up paper in the parking lot, they would have to fill out that application online. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And so, so, so ministries have to rethink how we minister to the whole person. And when we understand our calling, our calling is, is not just about the spiritual aspect. Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches us first natural, then spiritual. It's kind of hard to minister to a person spiritually when that person is homeless mm -hmm. or hungry. So we try to minister to the natural person. And that's why I, I felt it was important for me to sleep outside last Friday night. Mm. Mm. And woke up with snow all on my feet. <laughs> but it was important for me to do that because I needed to understand how those homeless people feel and think. And to, so I wanted to experience it myself. And so I, I went out and I done that. And so the purpose of this, this, this technology at New Hope is to minister to the needs of the people in that area. And so, so the labs will be open Saturday. This is where we start at. The community lab will be open on Saturday from 11 to 1. Again, no charge. Everything that happens at New Hope really happens free. There's nobody at New Hope on a salary. I work part-time at the University of North to take care of myself because the church cannot afford to give me a salary. Nobody there gets a salary. Everybody volunteers. And so the purpose of this is to minister to those people. If you know where we're located, at Prospect and Bradley, and if you look on the map, there's not anybody in that area hooked up to UCP. So we want to offer that, that service if we can. To, to, and especially the seniors. We have some senior people who are afraid of the computer. We want to be able to show them that they don't have to be afraid. Here is how you can do this. Here's how you can use the computer to better your life. And all this needs to be for free, and it will be for free. And so hopefully, uh, with the extension of use to be, we will be able to get hooked up ASAP. Yes? You were on the list. You're on that list of the 61 new locations? Yeah, I see it here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. 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 sign up. <laughs> so, the senior class that we have has been the most dedicated class we have. They're there. I had to cancel this morning because I had to be here. But they are the most dedicated class. They come faithfully. Someone did it from the very time we opened it to now. So they, they really have been very, very uh, committed to learning this technology. So how to get machines and how to get access. Now you heard two great examples of what churches are doing. And this might be the basis of meeting with a group of churches to talk about how they can use these models, how they can recruit students, uh, and so on. I see a couple of one other thing. Okay. One other component is that we want to hire a person to come in on salary that was part of the grant of the city. Mm -hmm. If you ever had a grant for anybody, mm -hmm. you know you've got to do what you said you're going to do, mm -hmm. or else you've got to give the money back. Mm -hmm. Okay? So one part of the grant was that we would pay somebody $10 an hour to come in and run the lab. The 
make sure that we are using the lab and using the grant money for what we said. And so if you know a person who has those skills, then just have them to email me. That's c97 at aol.com. Okay. I see a couple of questions. I want to take a couple of questions before we move along. No? Okay. Campus Afro Studies might offer some classes for people who want to be trained to work in these labs. Yeah. I don't want to put it on the spot, but sister from Volunteer Campus Student Volunteer Services just walked in, so we could get campus students to volunteer yes. to be involved in this yeah. as well. So, and then have a list of labs and their times, and also know that we have people who are going to be running those labs. So that's something that we can work on as well. Yes. Let, me, let me respond to her. If that if you if you recommend people to come to the hope and we have more than eight people come, we can open up this other lab. Mm -hmm. So we actually have eighteen computers if you put the two labs together. Okay. It's just a matter of having someone to be there to work with those people. And and you can come by and, and, and look at our lab if yeah. you want to. Yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, have you have you seen ours? Okay. I haven't seen yours, but I used to work with uh, uh, Mrs. Nash, oh, okay. um, we, um, where I work, we ran a couple of youth programs um, and back to work uh, programs for the state of Illinois. And um, New Hope got a couple grants from us. And so I was the job developer on those uh, grants. So I've seen your lab, the, the first lab. Right. So I think your first lab was uh, really good. And um, she operated and ran that one really well. So, but I have how, yet to go to work say. New Hope has, has done over the years work with other institutions in the community who need assets. And we just finished this, this past Sunday summer, we had 10 weeks working with uh, assets initiative with some youth, and they use the lab all the summer. And so this is very important that yes. you understand. It. See me, and I'll give you all the information. Anybody wants it, I'll give you information. <laughs> come by. I have a question. Is it mm -hmm. a question here? Is going to get a computer oh, uh, okay. to his program. 
and that's why I brought him in. I have several other ladies who need computers. So we are working on giving them computers. No, I, I know what you're saying, yeah. uh, and that is a problem. So she will have a computer yeah. uh, within a, a little while. And if any of our other seniors or anybody wants to, because I'm work, we're working with Brian. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Jill, you're going to receive. Here? Um, I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Benita. I work with volunteer programs at University of Illinois. And I wanted to make sure that people knew, even if it's something that you personally are just interested in or in need of um, support, we send out, we have a listserv of over 4,000 students, faculty, and staff that are looking for volunteer opportunities. We send out <coughs> that information once a week on Mondays. So if you email us, it's very simple email address, OVP at Illinois.edu for Office of Volunteer Setting, Programs. Set up OVP for Office of Volunteer Programs, OVP at Illinois.edu. If you email us, we can post your volunteer opportunity in our listserv. But also, we often get requests from seniors that are looking for maybe outdoor help or, you know, regulations, things like that. They just don't think about these kinds of computer opportunities. So if you could, if you know someone that's in need, have them email or call our office. If they're not using email, um, call us. And again, if you could, I can give you my information, but it's 333-7424. That's 333-7424. And we can work with the students that are looking for volunteer opportunities to make sure that they get tutors and things like that. So, but a train the trainer program would definitely help. Could you give your name again? Benita Goins. So, getting machines and lessons, two churches uh, that have wonderful operations. The last two presentations, which will be abbreviated, has to do with cyberspace. Okay, um, and so we have two presentations one on CU Wiki and one on uh, eBlack CU in terms of. The last two points, the other two points on the manifesto had to do with um, making sure that all voices are heard, cyber democracy, making sure that people are not just downloading, but they can upload and make their voices heard, uh, and in collective intelligence, kind of being able to get access to all of that. And that has to do with what we do with cyberspace. So you guys want to? Sure. So uh, good morning. My name is Brian Zellup. I'm a grad student at the university and have been working on this project called uh, cuwiki.net, which is a website that we think is a sort of a, a pretty exciting tool uh, that has a lot of uh, potential to do, uh, to do some good. Uh, so for example, uh, it's, a, it's a website that's editable by anybody. Anyone can go to this website and read information about the local environment or post information, right? Um, it's similar to Wikipedia. It's drawing on Wikipedia with that name Wiki, but it's as easy to use as Facebook, and some might say even easier. Uh, so um, just a quick uh, few numbers about CU Wiki. There are already over 1,400 pages online, right around 1,400 pages of information uh, from anything from uh, churches to schools to parks around the neighborhood to historic people who have been members of the community uh, over time to uh, current events to other historical events. Uh, another way that the wiki is used is people have been uh, updating a site about today's meeting right now with some notes. So especially when the UCB folks were on there, there's now some notes online with a link to that, keeping that deadline uh, in, in our mind about March 1st. So there's a, a website uh, on UCB's website where you can register. And so there's a link you know, in the notes from this meeting on the, on the wiki. Uh, over 150 people have uh, signed up to use the wiki and are editing it, uh, or, or have at least edited it one time, at least. Uh, and there's a bunch of maps, over 50 churches, uh, and, and much more information is also on there. Uh, one of the cool things that has happened with the wiki is uh, some local Spanish classes have begun to uh, translate some of the English pages that have a lot of in-depth information into Spanish. So there are, so far, around 20 really in-depth pages that have been translated into Spanish too, which I think is an important piece mm -hmm. and uh, represents some of the voices that we need to be uh, including into some of these community technology meetings. Uh, but also to respond to a question, to your question about are there any other resources uh, instead of just on a weekly class at any one given place. One of the uh, interesting and valuable pages that's also on the wiki is something uh, about uh, a list of public computing resources. And I think it's called just that. There's a search box. You can search for any kind of keywords like we're used to these days. So public computing or computing resources. There's a page with a, a very in-depth 
list of different resources around here where there are different labs, like Salem, like New Hope, as well as multiple other places like the Illinois WorkNet Center, and even some more, uh, including maybe even a list of places that have wireless internet that's free, that you might be able to go to to use the internet. Uh, so uh, it's an exciting project. Uh, it's free for anyone to use. I, I encourage people to go to it, cuwiki.net. There's a, a group of people in the back. Give a shout out to everyone in the back by the coffee and donuts. Uh, they've got a bunch of laptops out there, and they are on hand to answer any questions, to uh, show people an example of the page. People can uh, you know, sign up for a user account, or even ask a question about uh, you know, how do you use email or something. You know? So there's some folks that can answer some technical questions right now on hand as a functional purpose for today's meeting. So we have to make sure that all churches have pages and all community organizations and that sort of thing. So as you listen to this, think about how you can take the project out to other people and, 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 and build it. Noah? All right, so I'm going to keep my remarks really brief. But um, basically, uh, if you haven't been to, um, please try to visit this weekend, the eblackcu.net. Um, it's a website where we've been digitizing a lot of information about after American history in Champaign Urbana. Um, we've digitized things like the Kentarian yearbook that Gamma Upsilon Psi puts out, um, high school yearbook from Centennial Central and Urbana High, um, some of the um, church anniversary publications of some of the churches in town, things like the, the Living Legends program that National Council of Negro Women puts out. So um, I, I just encourage you to take a look, but, but more importantly, I'd encourage you to think about how this site can be used by you and your organization. Um, we, to, with, with digital technology, we know that hard drives fail all the time, so we may think um, we have on our computer at home, if, if we're the secretary of a church, we may think we have all the, the church anniversary programs on our hard drive, but that's not, um, that's not necessarily the, the most secure place. Um, what we'd love to see is the um, community organizations and churches start uploading things like church anniversary programs, family and friends day programs. Um, any historical record can now be placed online in this digital archive so that we're building something that's useful both now and the present and, and useful hopefully in the future. Um, so, so, but it's, it's kind of, it's on us to make sure that, that when we do something historic and that we document it and say like um, a program or a special publication that we place it online so that it's both accessible in print and also, also accessible online. We know that, that most, most, most programs that any organization makes are already going to be made on a computer in something like Word or Publisher or something like that. So we just need to make sure that it's, it's not just printed out, but it's also placed on a site like eBlackCU, um, an archive site, so that it's, uh, it's going to be available now and into the future as well. So I encourage you to just take a look and, and think about how this site could be useful for you and your organizations to, uh, to make sure that the historic work that you do in the present will be known and talked about in the future. So thank you. Any questions, comments on the panel that you've heard, the presentation that you've heard? I'll just remind you, I just looked uh, on page 257, you will find New Hope. Uh, in this operation, described 273, Salem Baptist Business Community Lab, Computer Lab, and 465, you'll find Parkland. So this is a good resource for you not only to learn more about presentations that were made today, but other institutions and, and what they're doing. So again, if you Google Ideals and you see the B, you'll get the link to look at an online version of this book. No question. Now, we're, we're very respectful of people's time. That was a big issue last week. So we're going to shorten, and I've been kind of watching the clock and squeezing <coughs> people a little bit so that we can uh, have an abbreviated version of our last panel looking forward uh, and be able to have some discussions and wrap up our basic program by 11 o'clock and then adjourn to the back to work on uh, CU Wiki and just have informal discussions. So artists, you want to come? So I think to um, just last week we, we had um, several possibilities today, but I think what we want to do today is focus on a concern that artists brought to the table, and that involved his work with um, 
really with young black males. And so rather than having, all, we'll, we'll go back and have some of the other presentations uh, for future meetings, but let's just uh, have him talk about his work with marginalized males. And what we're trying to do is hear ideas that will help how we can develop programs moving forward that can use this phenomenal high-speed broadband capacity that Urbana-Champaign is going to have. I mean, one of the fastest systems in the United States is going to be here. And so we need to figure out how we make the maximum use of it. Arts? Yes. My, my name is Artis James. Um, Actually, I'm with the National Council of African American Men. Uh, I attended uh, one of the UC to be meetings, and uh, the main reason I attended that that particular meeting was they was talking about a, uh, a uh, community benefit fund, and I have attended some of the other UC to be meetings, but this one was of particular interest to me. And uh, the, uh, there was a resolution passed by the policy committee. And a part of that res resolution said that uh, they want to uh, they, they're going to develop a benefit fund, which about up to five percent of the revenue to be set aside in a community benefit fund to address the digital divide in the champaign urbana area. So that's the main reason I attended that. Uh, it, uh, then, of course, uh, by attending that meeting, they appointed me as the chair of committee to look at uh, different ideas, come up with different ideas what, what this uh, benefit fund can be used for. Uh, during that uh, committee meeting, uh, there was a lot of different suggestions and a, a few things that, that, that were mentioned in addition to uh, uh, funding, you know, using this benefit fund to uh, help fund maybe like Salem uh, Computer Program, New Hope Computer Co Program, Wiki and the E-Black e uh, e CU. Uh, that we also talked about uh, possibly having like uh, developing like a help desk. And, but my main focus is job. So at the time I'm talking here, I'm talking about, about job, jobs that can be permanent jobs. Like a help desk for, for people that, that may need some assistance while they're using their computer, but they can dial for a number and, and uh, uh, get some help. And we also talked about a geek card, which is a, like a troubleshooting. When you have issues with your computer, uh, we can uh, have someone come out uh, and help you with that. Uh, the Wi-Fi, which uh, serve uh, uh, Wi-Fi service to uh, to uh, to serve the underserved, uh, that was not covered by the grant. You know, that that was uh, discussed uh, quite a bit. Uh, so, uh, having said that, but uh, one of the things that I brought up was uh, uh, the installing and maintaining of the fiber optic system. Right now they have installed a lot of fiber optics to the home. But once these uh, fiber optics get installed into the home, we are going to need someone to maintain them. And so my uh, thinking was, okay, what, what, it would be a great opportunity for, uh, I'm saying some people in the minority community, which we know that, that, that the minority community is, is very unemployed, to try to get some additional training where they can uh, maybe uh, 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 see some of these jobs so that maybe they can have some employment from now and, and, and in, in, into the future. Uh, one thing that's kind of going in my mind right now, I know that uh, 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 the city of Champaign, they're going to, uh, they got a new project, the Bristol Park project area. And I see that it's part of this uh, grant part uh, on this map. And of course, uh, one, let me back up a little bit. One other thing we talked about was, was the Wi-Fi, the umbrella that that could also help out in the serve area. And so what I'm thinking is that, that if we can get some uh, uh, people in the community trained to install and maintain this uh, fiber optic, I think we could uh, uh, at least give some people in the community the jobs. That's, that's was my main focus. That's what I was, was talking about. Uh, how this is going to develop, I'm not sure. But right now, I don't think Park will have a training on fiber optic, but there are training out there. I, I looked on the internet there. There's places in Chicago that, that, that would train people, and then maybe a person get trained and bring that back to Champaign Urbana where they can train someone at Park. But this, this is something that, that, that uh, I think is viable, that, that could help out the community because we definitely need jobs. 
Uh, one thing Brian mentioned was, was uh, at that meeting was his co-op. Now, I think that's, that, that's an excellent idea. That is something that uh, you know I, I like to do a little bit more research on because I, if the people own the product, maybe uh, uh, you know we have better control of it. So if we have better control of it, then maybe we can. Uh, I'm still thinking about employment. We need to get more people employed, and and, and with this five doctor, you know we got different people from out of. Uh, I think the main person who's uh, got the one of these five doctor contract is a minority company, but they're out of St. Louis. And we need to get more contractors, more minorities in our own community trained where we can maintain and install these fiber optics. You know, uh, we're hoping that this fiber optics will continue to, to expand. And as it expands, there's jobs going to be along with that. So that, that's, that, that's my main, uh, main reason for, for, for pushing it. Uh, I, I was pleased to hear that there's uh, 61 new institutions that are going to be uh, part of this uh, uh, going to be connected. That, that's, that's opportunity there. But the, but the issue that we have right now is getting people <coughs> trained to do to do the work. And that's that, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, I'm still open, we, the committee is still open up for ideas on, on what can be done with this benefit fund. So having said that, I'm going to just kind of throw it out to, to, to the audience here. If you guys have any ideas, you can, you can email me or, or uh, anyone with the, uh, involved with the UC to be, so that we can get ideas where we can take it back to the policy committee, so that uh, maybe we we can uh, 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 use and utilize this fund to, to better fit our to benefit our community. You know, I didn't have enough of the um, benefit fund resolutions to pass out to everybody, so let me just reiterate uh, the six points that this was resolved by the UC to be policy board. One, establishes a goal to achieve digital equality for all people in the UC to be service area. Two, uh, will issue an annual public report on the digital divide. Um, three, the policy board will convene an annual meeting of anchor institutions to discuss that report and set general goals for overcoming the divide. That's where the Community ideas will come forward. Um, this meeting will be open to the public and scheduled as a regular meeting of all UC to be committees. Four, that's the policy board sets a goal to allocate 5% of its annual revenue and no less than 2% to a community benefit fund as a line item in the budget. Money for this fund will be dedicated to overcoming the digi digital divide. Five, prior to the operational phase of UC to be, the policy board will appoint an advisory committee for digital equality to help achieve its goal. There will be two co-chairs and at least seven committee members, including at least one policy committee member and people from the anchor institution. Um, and six, the advisory board will propose a plan, including a grant process in terms of distribution of the money. So those are the general guidelines. Very important because it means as the system becomes more successful, more and more funds will be allocated from its operation to address some of the kinds of ideas that we've talked about here, whether it's you know, access to equipment or training programs or, or what have you. So that's, that's a very uh, important piece and really a rare piece. I don't know, I, I was in Savannah as you guys were working on this and we got very excited. I tried to get the city of Savannah and the Savannah State you know, telling them you guys need to do what Champaign-Urbana is doing. I don't know too many places in the country that has, you know, followed through with this kind of, of resolution. Um, so, um, and then, you know, once that process is in place, there's still going to be a need for this kind of group to meet to keep planning beyond the benefit fund. I mean, there might be ideas that are bigger than what the benefit fund uh, can handle, and we might have to go out and seek funding. Uh, from other organizations or from the Department of Labor if we're talking about job training. Um, and so last week when we wrapped, two weeks ago when we wrapped up the meeting, uh, the idea of best practices. I mean, we might need to have a kind of a day-long conference that says, as we look around the country, as you see artists is doing, what are the 10 best ways that we could uh, impact job training, you know, using the resources of UC2B? Right, or what are the 10 best ways we might impact community economic development? And we have people coming in 
uh, who are working on these initiatives that will help us fine tune the ideas that we might uh, come across. So in general terms, that's where we're headed. Um, Past Nash has been involved in discussions of the benefit fund. Let's throw it open now for any comments, questions, um, because this is very important as, it, as we roll forward. UCDB is going to do its thing. It's going to connect anchor institutions. It's going to connect more homes and so on. But this process of how to make the best use moving forward is something that the community has to be well represented in doing and you know, very much involved in that process of discussion. Questions or comments? Yes. Um, I just want to put out there that um, I would like there to be a consciousness up front around gender. Um, because when we start talking about math and technology and that kind of thing, those are traditionally male areas. And while I'm not trying to block, block any black boy or black man getting anything, um, if we don't watch out, we could find things being completely dominated by men and nobody noticed what happened to the girls and women. That's a very important point in groups like the National Science Foundation, the American Association of Universal Women. There are some major national programs that are addressing what they call STEM, yes. science, technology, engineering, and math, and the women labor force. And so a part of these discussions, you know, we might have to have a special set of panels to talk about what kinds of programmatic ways can we have summer programs, uh, after school programs that would address the particular issue of, of women in STEM fields and women working with technology. Very good point. Mm -hmm. Peter? Uh, yeah. I'd like to just follow on with that and talk a little bit about, um, so there are aspects of this technology that are, uh, that are hard outdoor work which women do less of than men, but there's also aspects of it that are uh, very detail-oriented, and in fact, our head fiber technician is female. And so, and so to have uh, the, a focus on both uh, economically disadvantaged and gender disadvantaged minorities, uh, well, not gender disadvantaged, of course, actually. To have a focus on making sure that these that there's a, a good representation of anybody who has any interest in them uh, in these job fields is, is definitely feasible. It's definitely something that there are people in this community already doing it, and uh, we just need to make sure that that continues. Very good. So we're using. Could you have you just identify yourself so people can get yeah. use? Sure. I run Volo Broadband. We're an internet service provider, and we've done a fair amount of the fiber work in, in this town. Um, Thank you, Peter. So we want to use these 10 minutes to kind of, you know, have people <coughs> comment on reactions to something that's been said in the meeting or outstanding questions that we should put on the agenda for the next discussion. Anything you want to share that you think, you know, might be a concern or, or interest? There's a lot, there's a lot of, of money in the benefit fund, and that is not true. And we need to understand what is the benefit fund set up for, and then understand what you see to be is doing. And when you understand those two different, then I think you would not look at the benefit fund as thinking, oh, here's a lot of money, we can tap into that. That is not true. And that's a, that's a misconception. So I want Peter to talk a little bit more about that. He was in on the ground floor. So he can talk a little bit more about UCDB versus benefit fund and mm -hmm. how that came about. And what is the goal? I think if you look at item number four, it says what the goal is for UCDB. Benefit fund, the benefit fund. And we might want to have UCDB weigh in on that as well. Peter? Sure. Uh, well, as, as, as Reverend Nash said, the purpose of it is to overcome the digital divide. Exactly. That's and, the main purpose. And another, another interesting thing about it is that it is community-wide. It is not specific to UCB. It's, uh, the, the goal is to, to serve the entire community area and, uh, and do 
do things that can reduce the digital divide in the entire area. But as, as he said, it's also very, very small. And that, that's one of the reasons that I, I'm very excited about this idea of a co-op. The, the amount of money that can be put towards benefiting the community if the entire operation has that goal is much, much higher than if only a very small fraction of, the, of those revenues are. So we'll press you on the numbers when we have this full discussion, but we, we need to kind of hammer away at number of subscribers, how much the subscriptions are going to be, what percentage flows back from the various ownership options, if you will. So we'll, we'll, we'll follow up with that. But let me point out a couple of things that I see. One, the policy board will allocate a minimum of two and a maximum of five of subscriptions. And so that means the more subscribers you got, right, the more money you get. So if you're concerned about this, and we need to be beating the bushes uh, to talk to people before the deadline of March 1st. March 1st, because that's going to have a certain impact on this. That's point number four. Point number five says that we're running a little behind because prior to the operational phase of UC to be, there should have been an advisory committee for digital equality um, set up. And I don't think that's in place yet. So, you know, we need to be down at the policy board talking about how to get that policy board set up in a way that represents the Acker institutions and community voices so that those voices are very much uh, a part of that uh, process. And so maybe at our next meeting, that should be one of the agenda items so that we can, you know, kind of understand who's going to represent the voices in this room to go and get that issue on the agenda and clarified in a way that benefits the community. Yes. I just want to clarify a little bit. I guess when I see things that say 5% and no less, it bothers me to a point. Um, who's going to decide and when is going to decide whether we're going to, five, we're going to get 5% or 2% of it? Whenever I see a range, then it bothers me because I want. I guess I like someone to say you'll get five percent. <laughs> so I know that's something probably that is hard to do. But who who decides and when is that decided whether they're going to give us five or two percent? You understand my question? Yes, I do. I do. Um, Mike, you want to? Uh, I can't speak for the policy committee. They are the ones that crafted that language. Uh, but I think they wanted some flexibility to make sure that UCB could survive as an organization. Um, if UCB is losing money, it'll go out of business. So if, it, if, if the difference between 2% and 5% was going to put it out of business, they'd go with the 2%. But it's still young. There's not much money in that bucket right now, per se, because there aren't, there's only roughly 800 customers. Uh, and if you do the math at 800 customers at 20 bucks a month, that's not a whole lot of money going into that fund even at 5%. Uh, right now, so the goal is we need to get more customers, and that will allow that. And as we expand, uh, it gets beyond the area that's grant funded. That will help fund that a lot. So, while the community benefit fund is a very positive thing and represents a wonderful possibility, I think we need to be looking beyond that possibility and figuring out other ways to rally more people and more institutions and more funds. I mean, this whole question of Digital technology moving forward is a big issue nationally and globally, and there are corporations and foundations. If we could show them that there are underserved people beating on the doors of computer centers on a Saturday morning morning training, mm. you can bet there's going to be somebody that would respond with, here's some resources for more computers, more trainers, and so on. So, you know, the benefit fund is a beautiful idea in part because it represents a potential flow of money. But it also builds in community voices and access to the, to the decision making process. This is something that has been officially adopted and we have to hold the feet to the fire. But I think beyond that, it gives the community an opportunity to rally itself. Abdul talked a lot about self-determination. Well, this is where the rubber meets the road. You know, yes, we want to use this and any other mechanism, but we don't want to rest with this as the end all. I mean, I think there are going to be more creative ideas out of our meetings um, that will, in the end, have as big an impact as anything that can come out of the pool of money that can come from the benefit fund. I think, it, I think the ideas from this group can be just that powerful, because you see them already. I've been around quite a bit, and I have never seen a community where the church, the black church community, is in, in, as informed and involved in this discussion of the church and digital technology that I've seen here in Champaign.
I mean, it's, it's, I mean, like I said, you know, I'm kind of old, been around the track a few times. That, that's just not happening. I went to the training sessions doing the stimulus money and so on. Um, you have something really powerful here, and so I don't, I don't think you should shortchange yourself in terms of being able to put the pieces together. for a couple other questions. I saw a hand here and then this is today. Uh, um, in terms of sustainability, is the plan that you see to be will uh, see 501c3 status? Yes, Mike. Um, both city councils and the policy committee have adopted a plan that would point us in that direction. That hasn't happened yet. Um, I think over the coming months you'll see some discussions about the intergovernmental consortium turning into a nonprofit corporation, 501c3 is a technical thing that the IRS does, and you apply for that after you become a corporation, and sometimes that can take a couple of years for that to come into effect. So we wouldn't instantly become a 501c3, but we're also not making money, so whether we pay taxes or not doesn't really make, make much difference if there's no profit. <coughs> uh, but I, I think you'll see the discussion happen this spring about evolving into that private corporation, um, and then the 501c3 would follow on after that. If so there's that 501c3 possibility, and the community benefit fund will be governed by that with that representative structure that's set up. And I think one big issue to be discussed is what kind of organizational form does the uh, collection of anchor institutions and this group take? You know, whether or not that's, there's a need for a nonprofit or what have you, but that needs to be carefully thought through. The best way to kind of mobilize, keep mobilizing the kinds of discussions we're having here and bringing that to bear on that larger process. That issue needs to be on the table as well. Yes? I would just like to add that there are about $8 million worth of job training grants through the uh, Department of Commerce and Economic Co uh, Opportunity available as we speak. Um, you do have to go online and apply for those grants. Even though it's, it's filtered through the state of Illinois, it's federal government money. So that would be a great grant opportunity to apply for for your job training. Um, so will you be in touch with? Well, I can be. I work at I work at the Illinois WorkNet Center. Our the grants that we work through come from uh, De DECA. So yeah, if you want to contact me there, I can give you the websites to go. And let me tell you why I said that. Last week when we met, um, we were kind of working on this notion of how do we keep up with all of the ideas we're coming up with, right? And how do we make sure that we're being transparent, people know it. There's a sense that there's somebody in the back room, you know, kind of pulling the strings. So what we thought about was having, uh, you know, you talked about wiki pages. So we talked about having a series of pages. And one of those pages might be job training. And on that page, we can keep people informed about the current state of the discussion, future programs. Here's something that just came out of the Department of Labor. And that page then can be used to rally people and structure a meeting. And the same thing could be done with other training programs or hardware issues and so on. We, 
we didn't flesh that out last week, but that was one idea we had of trying to, you know, kind of sign up people to work on committees and using that, that page notion as a way of moving forward with it. So I, I would suggest that the folks that met after the meeting two weeks ago to kind of structure the agenda, um, that we have that discussion again about pages and then meet with the CU Wiki people so that we can set up that structure and kind of, you know, start feeding information into that structure. And, you know, all the people, all of you who signed up today will be on the listserv. And so you will get that kind of automatic. And, and, we want to apologize for the big confusion about the change in location. That just, that happened to us and we didn't respond fast enough. But this will be a way that we can keep everybody informed. And then you can feed back to the pages uh, as well. So we'll have that kind of joint meeting with the wiki folks and the committee um, to put that into place. Other big questions, concerns that we need to have on the table before we adjourn for kind of, um, Networking, net, networking period where you can talk to folks about ideas that came up or what have you. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't necessarily Would you identify have, yourself? Yeah, my name is Ricky Greer. Um, I don't necessarily have a question, but I just want to put this out here. My, again, my name is Ricky Greer. I'm executive director for the a and Development Corporation. Uh, and I just want to say that we have a computer lab that we're developing uh, at the Church of Apostolic Authority. We will be housed there. We're currently working on the logistics uh, as far as the lab hours, but if you would like more information, please email me at aodcork2 at gmail.com. And again, my name is Ricky Greer. So I just wanted to put that information Very out good. there. And you know, what we can do with this is maybe when we meet in two weeks, we'll have another series of rapid reports, and we can ask you to share with the group more of what you're doing. If anybody else has any other ideas like that that you want to share, we could add you to the rapid report process for next week. Any other last call for comments, concerns? Yes? Maybe just, I won't take up the time now because I know we need to go, but I do have something somewhat racial and controversial I'd like us to be able to discuss. Maybe I'll just talk to you in private if you see me. Well, I think it would probably be better, you know, to talk to the, that, that steering committee that met, you know, after the meet, last meeting. I think we'll probably gather here to talk about the next meeting, and, and the, I think we agreed that we would generally meet every two weeks from 10, from 9 to 11, um, every, every other Saturday. And I think in that way, we avoided conflicting with the ministerial alliance, is that right? There's, there were some other meetings that happened on the other Saturday, so we'll meet two weeks from the day from, at 9 o'clock, uh, and we'll make sure that we inform you of the place we're going to meet without fail so we won't have the problem we had this morning. But we've got pretty much on schedule. I want to, one, thank you for coming and really thank you for the opportunity to uh, fill in for our booth and, um, you know, coordinate the meeting. Yeah, right. one, other, one other time. Yes. That's a big question about the committee. When will the committee be defined? So that, that's a very, you know, the, 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 the big question that should be maybe a formal item in two weeks is what is going to be the structure of this group? And that has not been determined. That's why you see people kind of being recruited to the meeting to discuss the next agenda. So there is no bottom line in terms of how, what's going to be the structure. And let's put that as an item, as an agenda item for two weeks so that either a proposal can be presented or um, you know, we can figure out the process that that proposal will be pulled together. Thank you again Thank for you. coming. Make sure you uh, signed up and in touch base with uh, the uh, wiki editors in the back, please. Thanks. Thank you.